All right, guys, just want to do a little quick breakdown of this book I finished reading. Temulin. Temulin was actually the tribal name. Nobody's around me. I'm at school right now. Temulin. Temulin. Like Timu. If you guys heard about that website called Timu. T-E-M-U. It's like Timu Lin. That was the tribal name before he turned his name into Genghis Khan, which is actually Chinggis Khan. Chinggis. Like C-H-I-N-G-I-S. Chinggis Khan. But, uh... I think the Persians call him Genghis Khan. Could be them or the Italians, I'm not sure. But we know him as Genghis Khan or Genghis Khan. <sighs> it's a good book, man. It's kind of like a narrative. In the beginning, I was thinking, it's by Jack Weatherford. He's an educated gentleman. Um, he actually spends half of his time in America and half of his time in Mongolia. So he's a dedicated man. Um, it starts off a little slow. Sometimes the things that he says, it's kind of like, how does he know, you know? How does he fucking, I, how does he really know, you know? The era of the Mongolians was in the 13th century, which is in the 1200s. And I mean, their, their influence, I'm sure, was still seen, reflected, and made an impact all the way up into the 20th century. And so, fucking guy. Let's open that seven, dog. And, um, it's a fucking disturbance. But, um, hey, don't act like you don't see me my friend she works in the uh don't act like you don't see me i know you saw me you're late yeah <laughs> that's the lady that gives me coffee at the cafe it's like, it looks like this one. so some of the important factors i just want to say some interesting things that i discovered reading this book so in Indonesia, places like Mongolia and surrounding countries, what is known as Indonesia today was actually mostly of the Indian people from India. You know, that was that was who they were. So there's three main rulers that were highlighted that took over the empire. Obviously, it was Genghis Khan, who was the one that started it, you know, from the steppe people of the Onan River by the, the their main center was this was this mountain it was the bukan some, some some sort of mountain that in translation is like the mountain of god or something so it's like there's it's like their center i'm sure it's still important today and so anyway so it's genghis khan and then after he died you know, they were fighting for power, you know, whether it was his sons, his grandsons, you know, distant family relatives. They used to fight for over power and maybe after a couple of different reigns, Monkey Khan, M-O-H-N-G-K-E, like Mon Ki Khan. He, he was like the second greatest ruler that you know, made a big difference. And there was obviously generals that this fucking pussy right There was a couple of, a couple other generals who also made an impact and made a difference. And so it was Genghis Khan, Monkey Khan, and then kind of towards the end, Kublai Khan. So Genghis Khan was more like, he was about like pushing forward and finding new places to conquer and and through all this conquering, it was, they learned things, you know, they learned, they learned, they brought things back. They, you know, they, they, I mean, you gotta, you gotta read the book, but. And so anyway, in Indonesia, in Kublai Khan's reign, he was very smart, you know, he was already, he already had some foot 
in China. So, and the thing with Genghis Khan and his rule, he made it. He made it a thing. He was he was like the first known empire to allow people to worship whatever god they wanted. But ultimately, the Mongols, you know, their rule was was ahead of everything. You could praise who you want, but our law and our rule is above all that. And the interesting thing, the the Mongols, they didn't like blood. They didn't like bloodshed. They thought it was, they thought even to think of death was, it could bring it upon them, you know? And so a lot of times they didn't torture people. They would just either like kick them, beat them to death or things like that. But you know, as these other rulers and as time changed, like Kublai Khan and Monkey Khan, they were a little more brutal, you know? And people think Genghis Khan raped all these people or whatever. He actually didn't live that long. He died in 1227. And a lot of the descendants that came from him, obviously they populate. He, didn't, he couldn't have sex with everybody. His people were in so many different parts of the, the world that, you know, their influence is there. And another interesting thing, also, anyway, back to Indonesia, I keep going on and on, which is fine, I think. So in Kublai Khan's reign, he was in China. And he, they said his intelligence came from finding, not, not trying to like implement Mongolian culture into China, kind of letting them be who they are, but also him embracing that culture and kind of becoming Chinese in a sense. And... So when they were in China, different parts of China, so big, different regions, they went towards what is now known as Indonesia. And, and the Mongolian influence took Chinese to what is now known as Indonesia, but was predominantly Indian, which now makes it Indochina, Indonesia, like Indian Asia. So that's interesting. And a lot of other interesting things like, you know, silk, you know, like silk and satin, <clears throat> satin <clears throat> satin was influenced by the Mongol reign as well because after the Mongols kind of became solidified and things kind of slowed down <clears throat> I think this was after Genghis Khan was already dead a lot of their a lot of the paths that they created when they would go to war or go to conquer they became paths for trade and the Mongols had a big control over the trade routes and a lot of other actual countries, different places, different scribers, different writers in history, they found some written texts by these people saying that in these times were some of the safest times to travel because the Mongols had different stations along these routes, these routes, and allowed trade to thrive, you know. And a lot of Europe actually took a lot of the influence from Mongols and even America where they let people worship what they want to worship but in the end the American law is ahead of it all you know the American society of civilization and you know the Mongols were actually the first ones to to advance you know gunpowder gunpowder you know a lot of times it was the cannons you know and this was from like you know pillaging and and taking over and conquering other lands they just develop things they found things you know they came across stuff and so there was this like there was this this certain seaport called satin z-a-y-t-u-n and that's where like the shiny silky material called satin comes from so that was in influenced by the mongols and and they added more oxygen to gunpowder to make it have a quicker explosion as opposed to like a fuse that took forever to explode they added more oxygen to gunpowder and so the mongols also didn't like hand-to-hand -hand combat they thought it was best to fight from as far away as possible so they created a lot of these these missiles and these these newer ways to you know have war which influences what's going on today you know machine guns and artillery and fucking rockets and shit like that um yeah but ultimately the bubonic plague came about the black death and it affected the whole world at the time 
it was fleas that were on rats that, you know, got on boats, you know, and just traveled. Because at the time, trade was so big, enterprise and commerce, it was so huge that these things were getting around, you know. These, these rats were going from continent to continent, so it's a good book. I'm sure there's a lot more in-depth history to the Mongolian Empire and exactly what went on, but they really don't know either, you know. There's something called the secret history, which were like these scripts that people found, these these writings that were found supposedly from like Genghis Khan and around that time. And you know, they had to translate it from a language that was almost a lost translation. So a lot of the stuff I was taking it like, oh, it's cool information to know. What it really did was kind of spark my interest in history. Like things like, I don't know, things like the history of Europe or Spain why does so, so much of the world know Spanish? You know, why is Spain not as strong as it once was? Etc. You know, the things like the Soviets and the Ottoman Empire. So, and also, the Mongols actually, up until 2003, not until the 13th century, between the 13th century and the 20th, the 21st century, the country of Baghdad, or the capital of Baghdad, which was the capital, I think, of I don't know, was it Iraq? I can't remember, but that was one of the most powerful um, cities in the Middle East, you know, from, from the wealth that they carried. And the Mongols even took over and changed Baghdad. They they took over, they they, they were they were interesting people, you know. And then the last fact I'm going to say, I know this is a fucking rambling. You ever heard, I'm sure you heard of that saying mongoloid. Well, that's a mongoloid. It's because after, you know, a lot of people thought bad about the Mongols. You know, they're just savage people, you know, because, you know, the Europeans, they were like dressed up, you know, they had clothes, they were more civilized. Then you had people like, you know, the Catholic Church. They were wondering, who the fuck are these fucking crazy-ass village people, you know, doing this shit to the world, you know? The Crusaders, the Catholics, they were very powerful at this time. St. Francis was a well-known friend of the Mongols. You know, some of the pictures that they have painted, the things that he's wearing, are, he's wearing satin, he's wearing things, and some are saying these were actually gifts from the Mongolian the emperors, you know, the Mongolian Khan. And yeah, it's very interesting. But so, you ever see, well, I know you've seen uh, someone with Down syndrome, they kind of have Asian eyes. Some of their eyes look a little different. And a lot of these critics and these people that d didn't like the Mongols started assuming that these people were descendants of the Mongolian Empire. <clears throat> so they're called mongoloids they were called idiots um things like uh even some of the jews because the jews some of the jews that were actually the jews were getting persecuted by the christians the christians did a lot of persecutions the christian used to burn a lot of people because of the bible and thinking people were evil and so the muslims would get killed you know the muslims did a lot of killing as well but the Jews would get killed because of their affiliation to the Mongols. They were getting persecuted and burned and were thinking they were evil. Yes. Anyway, I talked too long, didn't I?